Hey everyone, it's Michael Fair from BIT here, uh, here with Stuart Alexander uh, for our fifth episode of Lockdown Lowdown. How you get on, Stuart? You well? I'm very well, Michael. Um, weather's obviously nice there in Stirling today. Yeah, I'm loving the new MS Teams features to get my background in. I can hide all my cuddly teddies in my washing. <laughs> very good. So, Stuart, what are you finding is the best thing uh, just now about working from home? Um... <laughs> Not a lot, to be honest with you, Michael. I think my answer to that would be uh, the risk of being too saccharine. Um, I've got a beautiful wife. I've got three fantastic kids, 21, 16, 12. And I think it's just confirmed again what a good family unit we've got. I don't think there's been any arguments in the house in the six or seven weeks that we've been in lockdown. Um Amazing. I'm very proud of the kids, the way they're handling it. I'm very proud of the missus, the way she's handling it. So um, I don't think there's anything particularly great about being in lockdown or, or working from home. Um, I suppose anybody that knows me knows that I always carry two things, and that's cigarettes and smints. And uh, I'm probably saving a fortune on them because I'm not encountering you as much in the office <laughs> at the moment. Um so I don't think there's anything particularly great about it, Michael. And I'll be I'll be very happy when we get back to some sort of normality. Oh, cool. Are you uh, are you keeping fit and stuff just now? What are you doing? Well, as you know, I was already at ultimate ultimate fitness level um, for yeah. a fifty year old yeah. man. I wasn't so, going to ask. Yeah. Uh, I'm still doing my regular exercise. I get out my bed myself. I put my socks and the rest of my clothes on myself. And I find after that I'm pretty fit for the rest of the day, Michael. That gets you going, yeah. You're stretched out with the socks on. Uh, on a more serious note, then, what's uh, going on um, with your clients and stuff just now within BIT? <sighs> Straightforward the answer is not too much. Um, I think we'd all recognised before we went into lockdown that there was a slowing down in the recruitment process with a number of clients, as I think they envisaged that the country was going to go into lockdown. Um, and then pretty much on the day of lockdown, just one client after another, we saw you know putting recruitment freezes on. Um, and I've had a number of conversations with people um, through the, the fact that we've got MS bookings now and they're asking what the market's like and i talk about how many buying clients bit have which is around about 200 and the fact that we've probably got a, a couple of handfuls who are still active in the market so a number of uh, my own individual clients are, are are on recruitment freeze um and i think um listening to boris johnson yesterday when he was talking about next week there will be a, a detailed plan of how we're going to start coming out of lockdown yeah. um, i'm hoping that that may start some clients giving them some confidence as to, to what the, the future weeks and months hold um and and that things may start picking up again i know from talking to the other guys in bit that there are one or two promising signals with certain clients but obviously our clients sit in different market sectors, different market mm -hmm. sectors have been impacted in different ways by uh, COVID-19. Mm -hmm. um, how do you think then this will change things, you know, in the long term, the way we work? I think there are organisations who have been quite reticent to um, allowing staff to work from home. Mm -hmm. And I think there needs to be a change of mindset around that and, and possibly the staff themselves will force that upon their employers to say, well, look, we proved our worth during lockdown, we proved our productivity didn't drop um, and perhaps you can be a, le a little bit more lenient on allowing us to, to work from home. So I, I think that's one thing um, and I think the organisations, there's a number who already do that and I think they see the benefits of that um, and there's a number who could see the benefit of doing that going forward. All also think um you know we're using video here to communicate um so i think organizations um a bit more receptive to using video conferencing for interviews um, and making decisions so i'd like to think i'm not 100 percent certain it will though michael but i'd like to think that some people might recognize that uh, there's a, a way forward which is mutually beneficial to both what we would call candidate and the client by using video for interview yeah no, fantastic. I mean, I think that a lot of clients, it would be good to see them adopting uh, a video more going forward, like you're saying, um, and really kind of taking that actually, you know, they've put all these new policies and procedures and things in place, even from boarding and things, um, and they can do so much more remotely. 
Um, so hopefully it will see a slight change. I don't think everyone will be working from home forever. Um, but yeah, it definitely will make some changes in the, in Listen, the future. Some people, some people don't like working from home. We have one in our own organisation, Freddie Kidd. Mm -hmm. So not, not everybody likes working from home. Um, it yeah. suits some people, it doesn't suit others. Yeah, no, totally. I think for, I think for me... And I don't know your your trains is bad, but like I mean, it's two hours a day on the train, you know. So it totally changes your whole working day when you don't have to get up at you know half six in the morning and you're back at the back of six at night. So it does, you know it's really really good. But I, I mean, sadly enough, I am missing like you know getting up and getting the train and going going actually going to work. Um, we were joking about with, with Nick uh, a couple of weeks back, weren't we? About you know the first day back in the office, like oh where are you today? And like I'm home, working from home. <laughs> like nobody's going to be doing that yeah. you know i'm sure we run right into the office you know well it's, um, human, it's human interaction you know mm -hmm. to do to do a call like this is is uh you know interacting but yeah. it's not the same as being face to face um and, not, when, and certainly within a group of people you know somebody suddenly tells a story which leads to another story which leads to a wee laugh for five minutes or so and then back to work um and even the human interactions you might have on that train journey, bumping into somebody that you haven't seen for a few years and having a conversation, um, you know, these are the things that we, we're missing lockdown, I would think. Agreed. Uh, so have you learned any new skills then uh, during lockdown? Um, no, not really. Um, other than uh, ultimately deciding what is my favourite spiced rum, um, I've, been, I've been going through a number of them over the last uh -huh. weeks uh, and decided that Dark Matter is my favourite spice drum for any spice drum drinkers out there. But Dark ultimately, matter. other than that, Michael, no, I haven't. Dark Matter, I'll definitely check it out. Um, where is the first place that you're going to go then and you come out of lockdown? Um, friends, family, probably the same as many people. So my, my parents... Um, are three miles away from where I live. So I'll pop in and pay them a visit. My in-laws stay about 100 metres along the road. Um, so I'm sure we'll be popping in and seeing them. Um, and then the, the second weekend out of lockdown, um, assuming that we are allowed to be in a group, I've got uh, I've got that year mark for a party at my house. Um, and of course, I think uh, you've, you're invited to that one, Michael. I'll be there. Looking forward to it. Can't wait. Can't wait. So our last question here then. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this one, Michael. Uh -huh. <laughs> don't give it away that you know what it is so how long <laughs> i'll read it word for word how long before you have to cut your own hair stuart oh i think i've probably got about seven or eight years <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if you'll notice but i uh, got a bit bored last night took the wee took the wee beardy off it's gone I feel like i've dropped five years and missus was well, pretty surprised I did feel I was being interviewed by uh, a secondary school person rather than uh, <laughs> rather than the Michael Fair I've known over the last few months. I think it suits yeah. you better. I think it suits you better. You think? I have instant regret. As soon as I did it and I walked through and uh, Lucy's face just kind of went, <laughs> what have you done? No, no, I've, was... I've often said that my beard's only here to give you something to look at. Otherwise, it just yeah. looks like I've got a football on top of my shoulders. <laughs> football on top of your shoulders? No, totally. No, well, that's that's us, Stuart. Thanks very much. Okay. Uh, thanks very much for your time. And uh, are you going off to... in the banana boat behind you? The banana yeah, boat right in the donkeys. I think I might just tap off and just run straight at the at the water. You know, nice. the sun start the sun's starting to to come up. You can see in the corner there. So I'm just going to. It's actually so sad how happy I'd be if I was on a face right now in the sun. I think, um, I think we're a wee well away from that yet, but uh, I know, totally. Listen, every, every day that passes, we're a day uh, closer to getting back to some sort of normality, Michael. Yeah, no, totally. Awesome. Well, thanks very much, Stuart. Appreciate your time. No Cheers. worries. Take care. Thanks. Bye bye.